Three years after the Taliban's takeover, sweeping new laws are limiting the already restricted freedoms of women and girls in Afghanistan. These so-called morality laws were recently approved by the Taliban's supreme leader. For women, these rules include bans on speaking in public, traveling without a male guardian, and a ban on eye contact with men outside their family. Face and body coverings are also mandatory. Punishments for violating these rules range from a verbal warning to imprisonment. Friday, 12 United Nations countries, including the U.S., released a statement about the law saying, quote, we condemn in the strongest terms the Taliban's continued systemic gender discrimination and oppression of women and girls in Afghanistan. Vonda Velbat Brown joins us now. She's a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and the director of the Initiative on Non-State Armed Actors. Thank you so much for joining us to put all of this in perspective. Uh, as you just heard, several countries have condemned this new law. Uh, is there anything else that governments can do that don't agree with these changes? Well, thank you for having me on. The condemnation is absolutely appropriate and needs to be resolute and, frankly, go beyond the 12 countries that have issued the condemnation. There has actually been a rather consistent international condemnation of uh, the Taliban's approach toward women, which can be appropriately called gender apartheid. Uh, there have been many delegations from Islamic countries, Islamic religious scholars, going to see uh, Amir uh, Haibatullah and try to persuade him that his approach to women is unacceptable. Unfortunately, these uh, calls have had little effect. And in fact, we have just seen very considerable hardening at the time when there was hope that, um, in fact, some easing of the restrictions would take place. So there are sadly few tools left that for uh, international countries, such as the United States, uh, would amount to completely cutting off any relations with the Taliban. That cuts across other interests, such as counterterrorism interest, and also is very unlikely, actually, to change uh, the Taliban's uh, supreme leader's uh, attitude. So, um, unfortunately, there is no easy, pollution, easy policy solution to instigate change in what is horrendous and unacceptable situation. Yeah, just words right now, like you said, to condemn them in, in hopes that other countries will also um, come together and speak out about what's happening there. We know that education was already a threat to Afghan women um, but why these strict laws now? What is this really all about? What is the Taliban saying, the reason behind this? Well, uh, you know, officially the Taliban is uh, claiming that this is consistent with Sharia, the way um, uh, Amir um, Haibatullah Akundaza interprets Sharia. Uh, but there are possibly uh, other motivations as well. There has, uh, frankly, been substantial pushback against the laws, not just within Afghanistan, not just from the very courageous Afghan women, but from even within the Taliban leadership. Some very senior members of the Taliban, including actors uh, such as Sirajuddin Haqqani, have um, privately, and in some cases not so privately, spoken against the restrictions on women. Many Taliban leaders privately articulate that they strongly disagree with many aspects of those, such as denial of education. Yet this has not influenced Haibatullah's positions. And in fact, after about a year plus of pushback, slow walking of many of his policies, and in fact, local violations of some of his policies, we see this tremendously restrictive document, which I expect is also about his asserting power and saying any pushback, any opposition to me will be met with uh, dismissal. It'll be interesting to see what the reaction from the Afghanistan women uh, might be in the days and weeks ahead. Vonda Velbab Brown, thank you for joining us. Thank you.